Hi, in this video, we're gonna talk about use memo in React. So let's say you have a function in your component. Once re-rendering starts, you're calling that function using use memo hook. Then use memo hook is checking if dependencies are same as on previous rendering cycle. If they are not, it executes the function and it caches the results. So next time when re-rendering starts, again, we are calling the use memo hook and it's checking the dependencies again. And if this time dependencies are same as on previous re-rendering cycle, it doesn't execute the function. It just returns result from the cache. So let's see how we can implement this. Code with Sloba. To demonstrate how use memo hook can optimize our components, I created this heavy calculation component. This is a simple functional component. And here we have this math calc function which performs some heavy mathematical operations. And what is important to know is, as you increase the parameter that you're sending to this function, the time for execution gets exponentially uh, increased. And we will see that in a second. So we are storing the result of this function in a result variable, and then we are just executing or compiling here high name, which is also being parameter from the parent component, and then we're displaying the result of this heavy calculation function. So now what we can do is we can import this heavy calculation function inside of our app component and let's see it in action. So let's import heavy calculation here. And now let's place it inside of our React fragments. So heavy calculation like so. But this function, as we've seen before, receives number and a name, two arguments. So to fill in these arguments, let's create two input fields. Let's set a paragraph. So it's nicely set up one below each other. And let's open up an input. And inside of this first input, let it be for the number. So let's set the placeholder as a number. And now let's set a value. For the value itself, we will need to use useState hook to set up and update the function. So, or actually the value. So let's import the useState hook from React, like so. And now let's initialize the first variable. So let's name the variable as input number and update the function as set input number. And now let's call our useState hook and set the initial value to be zero. Now we can use input number and place it here inside of the value. And we want to update this value on change. On change, we wanna call event, and then we were just gonna call the set input function to update our input variable. And we're gonna pass the event.target.value, like so. Let me save it. And now we can duplicate what we did here and create the same for the name. So input name, and we wanted to update the function to set input name, like so. And now we can duplicate this input field as well, like so. Now let's set the place, placeholder to be as a name. For the value, we want to use the input name. And for the function, we want to call set input name here. And now we can use these two values to pass them to our heavy calculation component. So let's pass a number as input number and let's pass a name as input name, like so. Now let's compile it and let's test to see what our component does. But actually for the placeholder or actually the initial value for a name, let's pass in a string. So let it be an empty string, like so. If we try to input some of the lower numbers, let's say two, you can see that we get results almost instantly. But if I increase the number, let's say to 12, and I have tested this before, you can see that my UI is stuck. It's like broken and it takes more than five seconds to get your result back. And I know this calculation is expensive and we cannot change that. But what's tricky you can see if you start typing the name of the user that we want to display inside of this string, 
let's say Bob, you can see that the UI is stuck again, even though we're not changing the number here. So you can see, let me type it again. The cursor is not blinking anymore, so the UI is stuck because it's recalculating every single time that we are re-rendering this component. So as you can see, every time. So we can optimize this because we don't have to rerun this calculation as we are not changing the number of this input number. So this is where use memo can become very handy. So let's head over to heavy calculation function here and let's import use memo from the top. So import use memo from react. And now what we can do is here, instead of calling directly this function on every single re-render, we can call our use memo hook. So use memo like so. And then as a first argument, we need to pass in a function like so. This function needs to be a pure function and it cannot accept any arguments. Also, this function can return a function, a number, string, whatever. And the second argument that use memo hook takes is a list of the dependencies or variables, functions, objects, so which this function is dependent on. For this case, this is the num variable which we get from the parent component. So items in this dependency list are telling to use memo hook when to execute this function. So first time that we are running this function, it executes this math calculation function and it stores result back and it returns back this result. So next time when we re-render this component, it checks if this number has been changed or not. If it's the same, it just returns the cached value of the use memo. Otherwise, it reruns this math calculation function and then it caches again that result. So let's see what we have changed now. So if I go and if I refresh our component, let's type in number 12 again. And for the first calculation, again, we can see that our UI has been stuck. But now what the difference is, if we start typing our name, you can see that our UI is not blocked anymore. And that is exactly what we wanted to have. As use memo again is comparing the values on the previous re-render using object.is function. And if it's the same, which is in this case, it's not blocking your UI anymore. Beautiful. And if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.